Hi, in this video, I'll be showing you the association analysis between variables using R on the one data set that I've used as part of my text analytics project. Here, I'll be demonstrating the association analysis between continuous variables and between categorical variables. So let's get started. Before we start with our analysis, I would like to first go through the theories behind finding association between variables. To find the correlation between continuous variables, we use Pearson correlation coefficient. It's also known as the product moment correlation coefficient. It's a measure of the linear association between two variables. You will know if the variables are correlated, and you will also know the degree of its association. If the coefficient is minus 1, it means that the two variables has a perfect negative correlation. 0 means there's no correlation, and 1 means a perfect positive correlation. If the coefficient is less than 0.3, we can say that there's a weak correlation. If the coefficient is between 0.3 and 0.7, there's a moderate correlation. If the coefficient is more than 0.7, that means there's a high correlation, and this goes for positive and negative correlations. With categorical variables, the Pearson correlation coefficient will not work. In this case, we'll have to use the Pearson chi-square test, where it will tell you if the variables are correlated, but it will not tell you the degree of its association. First, we'll set up a hypothesis. The null hypothesis means that there's no association between the two variables and the alternative hypothesis means there's an association. Chi-square test is then performed via a contingency table or a frequency count table between the two variables. If the p-value comes out to be less than 0.05, we can then reject the null hypothesis and say that there is some relationship between the two variables. So this chi-square test is a good check for multicollinearity, where two or more independent variables are independently correlated with one another. Let's begin with our analysis. Um, so here are all the packages that we need and I've already loaded them. And so the first thing I'm going to do is to read in our um, data set, the wine data set from uh, my previous video. And we're just going to have a look at it. So here is the data set, and as you can see, these flavor variables are the ones that I've created from my last video. The next thing I want to do is to create another set of flavor variables, and it will show 1 for true and 0 for false. Alright, so let's run through the code quickly. <coughs> And let's double check the results. So as you can see, I've created another set of all the flavor variables using one and zeros. Now let's look at finding the association for our variables. The first example will be between continuous variables. And for this, we're going to be using the core.test function from the psych package. The two continuous variables that we'll be looking at here are the price and points variables. Let's run the variables through the core test function. As we can see from the output here, the correlation coefficient is 0.42 between price and points. The positive value suggests that they are positively correlated and the numerical value of 0.42 suggests that they are moderately correlated. Next, I'd like to plot a scatter plot to visualize the association between price and points. And for that, we're going to be using ggpairs function from ggalley package. So let's run through the um, code real quick. The 
the output shows that we have a correlation coefficient of 0.424 between points and price and we can also see the density plots for price and points shown here. Let's now move to finding association between categorical variables and for these we're going to be working with berry and citrus variables. Let's quickly have a look at the frequencies of these um, variables. As we can see here, the ratio of 1 to 0 is almost 1 to 1 in both berry and citrus variables. To compute the chi-square test, there are two options. The first option is to use the chi-square dot test function. And remember, we have to first build a contingency table of berry and citrus variables and pass that table into the chi-square.test function. All right, let's run through the codes. And this one is to build the contingency table. And this is how the contingency table looks like. And we'll pass that into the chi-square.test function. As we can see from the output from the chi-square test, the p-value is very, very low. This means that we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is an association between berry and citrus variables. Next, I'd like to plot a mosaic plot to visualize proportions between berry and citrus variables. So let's run through the code. The second option to run the chi-square test is to use the cross-table function from the G-models package. So let's run this quickly. The output from this function is more elaborate. As you can see here, if you set the expected to true, you'll be able to see the expected values. We can also see the result from the chi-square test that the p-value is zero. This means that we can reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is an association between berry and citrus variables. So up to this point, in terms of association between categorical variables, we have only worked with two categorical variables. That is the berry and the citrus flavor. But as you all know, I have more than two flavor variables. In fact, I have 12 of them. So in the next step, I'm wondering if I could do an association analysis between all of my 12 variables. Meaning, instead of having a two by two matrix here, I will have a 12 by 12 matrix. So I've done a little bit of research and also asked some people about this. And I found two methods that you can use in order to answer this question. So the first method is to use the um, core function. In the core function, we'll be using Spearman method. Spearman method is like Pearson's correlation, but it actually assesses how well relationship between two variables described using a monotonic function. It sounds complicated, and I believe it is. So I'm going to leave you to wiki about it if you want to know more about the theories behind it. I'm going to start by subsetting all the flavor variables and putting that through to the core function. So let's run that quickly. And let's look at the core function uh, output. The output consists of a matrix of correlation coefficients. There are some methods for you to visualize the um, matrix. One way is to use core plot. Let's run that. So in the core plot output, the positive correlations are displayed in blue and negative correlations are displayed in red. So recall when we use the chi-square test before, we only know if the two variables are correlated but not the degree of association. Here, we can tell in which way they are correlated, either positively or negatively. So as we can see here, berry is negatively correlated with citrus, and this is further confirmed by the correlation coefficient that we obtained 
from the um, output here. So another way you can visualize the correlation matrix is to use heat map. So um, we can set up the palette and then we pass through the correlation matrix through heat map. And so this is what we get. Another option to compute the correlation matrix for all the 12 variables is to use the R core function from the HNIST package. This option allows you to also obtain a table of p values. So let's run through the code. We'll set the flavor variables as matrix and put it through the R core function. Let's look at the output. Now this output gives us the p values. We run this code to get the coefficient. I want to go ahead and view that. Let's take this out and view it. So there you have all the coefficients. And it matches the one we got before between berry and citrus, which is minus 0.25. Now, if we run this to get the p-values, we can have a look to see the p-values. So we can see here all the p-values for all 12 variables. If we look at berry and citrus, the p-value is 0. This means that we can reject null hypothesis and conclude that there is association between the two variables. I'm still looking at other methodologies to compute correlations for more than two categorical variables, and I might be showing that in my videos in the future. That's all I have for this video today. I hope you like it. Stay curious and keep learning. Bye.